I finally got my computer fixed and I can actually upload some videos. So I'm so excited. Fourth Dimension Computer was able to help me out today. And now we can actually get back to work. This is Aubrey. This is Crime Baby Sentimental Homestead. And I'm so excited to share with you today what we've got going on here on the homestead. I have four seed packets from Rare Seeds or Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds that has been waiting for my computer to be fixed before I could share and actually open them up. And after that, I'll tell you what will be on the next video. So let's go ahead and get inside, open up those packages and see what I've got going on. I am so excited and I know you are too. So this is what a month's worth of Baker Creek seed orders looks like for me. <laughs> okay, so I had made a budget of $15 per week, um, $15 to $20 per week on Baker Creek seeds. I don't think I made it this month because they had a promo for two of the weeks. They have like this really crazy good deal. So we'll see that to when I, when I get to it. But I have basically put these in order. I've got one, two, three, four, five Baker Creek seed packages. And so I said there was four, but it's actually five. So let's check it out. And I might not need to do another Baker Creek seed order for a while. We'll see if they come up with anything that's tantalizing and tempting that I feel like I just have to have. Um, my next video is going to be on three packages from different vendors. But I know you love Baker Creek as much as I do. So I decided oh, I'm, you know, I, I thought maybe keeping it as a like for later. I'm like, make, have you watched my other video first? But I know that a lot of people really love Baker Creek. So I'm going to go ahead and share this with you now and um, I'll save the other three packages for another video. Please click like and subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you can see my other videos. And if you haven't seen all of my videos, um, there's like over 300. So please take a look um, at some of the other content that I have. And let's start with this one right here. And it looks like poinsettias, but I did make this order in February. Thank you for packaging my seed order. I appreciate it, Baker Creek. You guys do a phenomenal job. And I always say, I wish I could go to this um, really cool expo, but I live in Washington State and this is gonna be in Ventura, California. If you are um, in that area, that would be very cool. September 10th to 12th in Ventura, California. So nice. Oh, I'm so excited about this, okay. How many of you are like me? You're on Facebook or something and somebody posts something like this and they're like, oh, you know, you finally have this in stock. And so like it wasn't showing up like when I was looking through the new stuff, I didn't see this on the new stuff because um, every year basically I've gone through all of the stock and I'm like, oh, I have everything basically or I've considered everything. And so I'm looking at the new stuff and somebody posted this and I am really excited. So this is called, I'm not sure how to say it, the Ayote Green Flesh Squash. Um, yeah, so I'm not saying that right, I'm sure. But why are we excited? So yeah, and some people were complaining because they didn't, it doesn't say on the site how many days it is 125 days which means i am going to have to start these indoors before my last frost um which i usually don't do that with squash but because it takes so long i will but it says um exotic green flesh pumpkin has flavor that will blow you away eaten raw it has tropical fruity hints some describe as papaya or banana cooked its flesh is dark, as sweet as chocolate, and needs no enhancement. So, you know, I didn't just get one packet. How many seeds do I get in here? Do, 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 do. Minimum 10 seeds. So, yes, they're about 50 cents a seed, 45 cents per seed. Okay. So, I'm not sure if they said if the 11 means they gave me 11 seeds. Um, minimum is 10 seeds, and it says pack for 2024. And, yep, so these, these are going to be really good. So, I'm looking at 
Now, 50 cents per seed to me is expensive, but this is a very specialty type um, squash. So if I was just going for like a zucchini or a yellow, you know, yellow um, summer squash or just like a generic pumpkin or an acorn squash or something like that, I would not be expecting to pay 45 cents a seed, but this is really cool. Okay. So I got three because I know I'm going to talk about this and somebody I love is going to go, Oh, I wish I had that too. So, um, and then they gave me the Marlboro lettuce again, which I'm very happy to, to have because those red antioxidants are fabulous. Um, and talking about what you're growing in your garden. Now, if you're talking about food security, lettuce does not have a lot of calories, barely any, but there's a lot of like nutrients, nutrient value. So yes, I am going to grow lettuce, whether or not it's calorically dense, I'm going to grow it. And I'm also going to grow things that are calorically dense, like potatoes. So make sure. And also I have tons of, um, garbanzo beans. Garbanzo beans or chickpeas are one of the most calorically dense dry beans. So if you're trying to prep for food security, you want to have garbanzo beans, okay, in your hall, especially if you like them. And my family does. And if this week, on this particular week for that order, I did make it for less than $15. So on that week, I was a good girl. <laughs> Let's look at the next week. And I will say on the next week, so that on this order here, I put it in and then um, found out that there was a promo going on the very next day. But let's go ahead and see. And I have no regrets. What did I order on my second week? Okay. Thank you, Baker Creek, for packaging and sending my order in such a timely manner. Love your products. And um, I got these Mabombo beans. And I don't remember why I thought they were amazing, but let's see. It says 50 to 60 days, beautiful emerald colored bean that originated in Kenya. Five to six inch pods yield kidney shaped bright emerald green dry beans, drought and heat tolerant. They're vigorous long vines that need support. Soak the seeds overnight and then direct seed after we lost frost. Okay. So I'll probably be planting these around June 1st, um, just because I think that's by the time I'm ready and I'll have other things to, to harden off. Um, but those are really beautiful. I just think that's gorgeous. It reminds me, I don't know, like the Emerald City and um, the Wizard of Oz. So that's probably why I got those. They're just totally gorgeous. I also got these blah, 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 beans. <laughs> the blah, 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 and beans yeah that's what it says so these beans are one of the oldest yellow wax beans grown in france for 150 years they're early and delicious they have the bush habit so they're not going to be vining they don't have you know how to stake them or trellis them or anything these are also direct seeds soaking seeds overnight pick them frequently so the other ones here are going to be dry beans so I'm going to pick them when they're dry and the, but these are going to be like, keep picking them. And the more you pick them, the more productive they're going to be and succession plant them. That means you're going to plant some, and then a couple weeks later, you're going to plant some more or the next month you're going to plant some more. So I'm really excited. Um, I know I love these. I know I love wax beans. So excellent. Then we've got. I didn't realize how much I would love Georgia Southern collards. So I had to buy some more and you're seeing the price of the price already. That's supposed to be a secret to the end. Okay. So I love collards. I think they're even better than cabbage. So those Northern gardeners, don't be afraid to try something that's not from up here. Um, they do grow very well here and they are very, very yummy. And I don't really need more corn, but I got some, Two packages of the bowl sweet. And if you're prepping, you want to have a well apparently a 
you would want to have the field corn that you can use for um, like grinding up and making your own flour and that kind of stuff. But I think you should grow what you like to eat too. And we like sweet corn and freezers are still working. So we'll freeze the extra. So we can take it off the corn or we could cut it in half and freeze them in freezer bags and then save them. I can't believe how much frozen sweet corn costs. It's ridiculous. I cannot believe it. Even like the really frugal stores, it's, it's more than a dollar an ear. Some of them sometimes it's like equaling out to be like a dollar for a half an ear of frozen corn. Crazy. So I think it's going to be at this point where it's grow your own is a good deal. It used to be growing your own corn was not uh, fiscal, fiscally sound because you used to be able to get like four, sometimes 10 corns of cob, cob corns for only a dollar. And now you're lucky if you can get one fresh corn for a dollar. And I'm seeing the frozen corn just as bad. Um, so it's getting pricey. So this is sweet corn. And they use words like yesteryear. <laughs> um, it's an old fashioned sweet corn taste. And I don't see if this is an, an heirloom. I think it is. If it doesn't say, I'm going to assume that it is because Baker Creek's usually really good about saying if it's a hybrid. And there are some hybrids that are not bad, you guys. Hybrid does not mean GMO. Okay. We can talk about that more another day. Um, this is cabbage. And I did recently buy the kind, the original kind that has a really more of a cone. This is cone shape too. But I have both the purple and the, the green really cone shaped one the one that's supposed to be the original one for um uh what they call it not coleslaw goodness gracious i'm part german i shouldn't remember this sauerkraut <laughs> okay so the one that's the original sauerkraut cabbage i did buy that too because their advertising is like spot on they honestly their advertising is amazing so these violet sparkle peppers, and I am starting to grow peppers in the next week, next week or so. So I'm going to put this off to the side, make sure I grow up. So this is the violet sparkle peppers, 75 days. Now that's after eight to 12 weeks inside before the last frost. Okay. So I need to start these soon. And then and when I transplant them like June 1st, I need 75 days. Okay. So you have to add those dates together and you have to add the dates to germination to that too. It says 10 to 14 days. Usually with peppers, if I'm using a heat mat, they pop up within a week, but without a heat mat, it does take longer. So I've got the chocolate cherry sunflowers. I am a cheap skate when it comes to sunflowers because I will buy the 50 pound bulk black oil sunflower seeds for my chickens. And then I'll just take a handful and put it in my pocket and walk around where I just walk around with a handful of black oil sunflower seeds in my pocket. And then whenever I see a spot, I pop one in, but these are going to be special. So I'm going to want to keep them when they're not going to get cross pollinated with my cheap skate sunflowers, <laughs> but they're really pretty. Aren't those beautiful? I think these might make really good cut flowers. Oh yes. And this is why I got them because they are multi-branching. Now, one of the reasons why I don't often do sunflowers for cut flowers is because I feel guilty. So I, you cut the, the sunflower and it's like, oh, that was it. The sunflower is done, but this one's multi-branching. So I won't feel as guilty cutting them. And I do want to do some flower arrangements possibly to do like a little roadside cell stand, but also for gifts and special occasions and for the vase. Amish paste tomatoes. So we do tend to like these paste tomatoes a lot because they're not too squishy. If you have a little issue with, um, like texture, um, tomatoes like San Marzano and Roma and Amish paste, they are not that, that really squishy center like the, um, beef steaks. So this is going to be good for us. And 
I will need to start growing these not as soon as the peppers so I can wait a few more weeks on those so like a week or two within the week next, next week or two I'm growing peppers and then a week or two later I'm going to start pep, uh, tomatoes so those are going to be good I also bought the bur burratino which kind of remind me of um what do they call them pear lemon or yellow pear tomatoes the shape a little bit but it comes to like this this point which is kind of interesting 70 days russian heirloom with perfectly balanced flavor and texture and it's good for sauces sliced and snack tomatoes outrageous flavor and so i'm looking for flavor and high yields hardy plants and multi-purpose so we're all about that we like things that are versatile um that don't mind a little bit of cold maybe because like you know they're gonna be sensitive to frost of course but it says it's a little bit more hardy and 70 days is not too bad now it is plus the seven to ten seven seven to fourteen days to sprout plus the six to ten weeks inside growing you know on the heat mat whatever um i don't only keep them on the heat mat till they've basically sprouted and get going um and then plus the 70 days outside so if i plant them june 1st june july mid-august i start getting the tomatoes then okay so i'll get some of those planted and believe it or not these were originally when i the first time i ever tried growing the thor burns terracotta i was growing it from free seeds you know how like they give us free seeds okay and it, i couldn't believe it so they see how big and juicy they are um the larger type tomatoes sometimes struggle here in washington and we have a hard time having enough time for them to bulk up and get ripe and the terracotta tomatoes they did great for me and i even had a lot of volunteer volunteer tomatoes popping up the next year and i you know i haven't gotten free thor terracotta tomatoes in a long time and i thought you know what i really need more seeds so i did go ahead and buy these so they do have a green seed mass they are very eye-catching they taste very good start six to ten weeks before less frost and heat mat helps them yeah, and that's true. I think that's true of tomatoes and peppers is that a heat mat is very helpful. Otherwise, you're like watching them, like watching the paint dry or watching the grass grow. It takes forever. But if you put a heat mat, not everything likes that, by the way. Not everything should be on a heat mat. But tomatoes and peppers and eggplants do fabulous with a heat mat if you have one. And the free seed packet from this one is the Japanese wasabi, which is... Um, a radish so this is it, in giant letters up here it says radish so this is like wasabi the flavor profile is like wasabi but it is a radish 60 days and I would do direct sowing oh, it says it's a daikon, daikon okay so want by the way if you want a hack on how to buy really 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 cheap daikon radish seeds I'll tell you the cheapest way to get daikon radish seeds, and I'm I'm fairly certain, I'm like 95% certain, this is where the seeds came from. So um, I, I've grown daikon radishes on purpose before. And then I bought a five pound bag of radish seeds for sprouting. Sprouting, air quotes, air quotes, air quotes. Sprouting. But I never really intended on using them for sprouting. I always use, intended on getting them for cheap seeds and i do that that's one of my hacks is i'll buy like a five pound bag of cilantro or coriander seed for sprouting and you're getting it for pennies on the dollar and so i have this giant five pound bag of radish seeds but i had no idea what kind of radish seeds they were so i do what i always do i had a pocket full of radish seeds in my po in like literally in my pocket and anywhere I saw a space, I would just poke a hole, put a seed, poke a hole, put a seed, especially towards the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. I was like, okay, well, I need something that's going to grow really fast. And when my husband saw them growing underneath the blueberries, 
he pulled one up and it was definitely a daikon radish. And I am even more impressed because you get a lot of radish for that penny. Um, it's incredible. So if you are concerned about food, if you're concerned about food security with the way that I am buying seeds for sprouting is a really cheap way to get seeds. And I'm 95% sure that the radish seeds that come in a five pound bag, three to five pound bags are daikon radishes. So, um, that's a lot of radish for your money because the regular little breakfast radishes are little, you know, and the daikons are huge. I'll have to insert a picture of my husband, um, when he pulled out the daikon. So this seed order, <laughs> I went over, I was based, this is basically like a two week order. So I did go a little overboard in February for seeds. Um, but I'm really scaling back in March for seeds. So that I'll just have to compensate. Let's get into the third packet. So I was going to be done. Okay. That was my, that was going to be my order. And then they did a sale. I'm fairly certain this is going to be a sale package. So let's see, rip into this and see what I've got and see how that sale promo helps me. So they are just, at this point, they're just teasing me about this expo. Okay. I'm sure they put this in every single order, but I'm like, I really want to go. I want to go. Okay. So the cabbage here, I got for free. So they had this, they had this deal. It was like spend over 20 at the day. It was like spend over $25 or something. I think it was that. Yeah. Spend over $25 and you get a bunch of free seeds. So the cabbage here that they gave me, I just bought in the previous order. You saw that. <laughs> um, this is not a duplicate order. Like that happens to me too. Like I accidentally buy the same thing. The previous order, the day before I bought these and then they gave them to me for free. That's my next order. Okay. Then I bought the Martian jewels corn and those were not bad. That was $5. Um, and these are pretty beautiful. These are beautiful, by the way. And almost white kernels, purple cobs and husks. So you can hi harvest right away for sweet corn. Or, I like the versatility here, wait a bit longer to use in soups or bread. Or wait even longer to harvest the dry kernels to grind for flour. So, if you're one of those gardeners, like myself, who kind of is busy and you don't just garden, you work, and you're, you have kids, and you're distracted, you have ADHD, like me, um, if you blink, and your sweet corn gets too starchy, you're like, oh man, this is just for the chickens now, or this is for the compost, but seeds like this, where you can harvest it at three different points, you could harvest some for sweet corn, some for soups and bread and some you could dry and then the dried kernels you could save and grow for seeds or if you're hungry you can grind them for flour so i love the versatility i also love the name martian jewels because one of my children's name me technically means mars so i thought that was really cool and he also loves the solar system in space. So I thought that would be really cute for our children's, um, a children's garden. And then, so this was, this one was free. I also got the Montana red Eagle, which is kind of a politically, um, delicate seed variety. Believe it or not, we can be politically, um, charge when it comes to different kinds of seeds. This was considered a sacred seed, which, you know, most seeds are considered sacred, um, to some culture, to, some culture is going to have, there's some kind of sacred stories and beliefs and stuff. Um, there are some rumors about how these seeds were sourced, but the stories I've heard from Baker Creek is that they were sourced ethically. Um, 
just remember, just you know, like I think be thankful that Native Americans have shared their seeds with us at some point in time, and that we are growing something. Be respectful in that manner. Um, ninety days delicious soft flower corn. So these are not sweet corns. They have a lilac colored eagle marking. Plants average two ears. I love that. Two ears. Love it, love it, love it. All the corn I've ever grown has only ever given me one ear of corn per plant. So I am looking for varieties that provide more than one. Now I will say, I think I had glass gem. A few of them might have had two ears, but they were tiny ears. So like if you were to add them together, they weren't even the size of one. So I wonder if these, the size of the cobs, if they end up being, you know, two smaller ears that are equivalent to one, or if it's like two full size, um, eight to nine inches sounds like it's normal size. So yeah, I'm excited. It is best to direct sow corn. So when you go to the um, grocery stores or to like Home Depot, Lowe's, and they're selling corn plants, it's really not worth it. You should just buy a packet of seeds and plant them. By being root bound in those little containers, they're basically as slow. You're not really gaining any time. So you lost some time because they're going to be slower because they really need to be in the ground. So yes, grow them in the ground and you will really be interested if you've never grown corn before by their aerial roots. They have these really cool roots that really help to keep the the plant stable from falling over but they're just structurally they're amazing it's like their own little architect their own little engineers so i love corn they're beautiful beautiful plants and that is the sacred marking on the corn kernels so respect our native americans and the abundance of food that they shared with us um this is the tinda gourd and I ordered this one, edible gourd. I'm looking for that edible gourds. Amazing. A lot of people aren't going to know that this is food. Gourds would make a really great gray man's crop because a lot of people are going to assume it's for making a birdhouse or something, you know? Um, but it's supposed to be, it fruits early and abundantly three to four ounces Harvest fruit when young and tender and fry it or use it in curries and soups. Um, nice. So you can also trellis this. Full sun, ample moisture, rich soil. That's the trick, you guys, with gourds. Really big fruiting plants like gourds, squash, and melons. They really generally need lots of, lots of compost. So that's, I'm happy about those. Oh, I have more corn here. I'm not sure how to say it. I'm just going to say Delaware black flint corn because I don't want to offend anybody with my pronunciation there. Of course, they're Native American because all corn is originally. So you can make grits. That sounds interesting. I've never had grits. Have you had grits? Comment below. Do you like grits? Small, seven to eight inches, but you get two cobs. This one tells you they're small, but you get two. Okay. That's interesting. They say on this one, direct sow into the richest soil available one to two weeks before the last spring frost. So I won't wait till June for this one. And then it says succession planting prolongs harvest. And of course, grow in blocks, not rows. I mean, if your row turns into a block because you have lots of rows, that's okay. But you want blocks so for that's for wind pollination right because we know that corn is pollinated by wind not not insects and stuff okay so where are we here on the receipt so so far we've had i paid for the corn seeds and i got the free cabbage this winter squash this winter squash is one i chose 105 days. Now I almost didn't get this because it's small and I'm really looking for 
like a lot of food per plant. Two pounds is not bad though. And it says it stores well. I've bought a couple of these, so I sure hope I like them, but I am betting that I will. Um, looking for lots of different varieties of spinach substitutes because in the hot summer months, Jul the end of like June, all of July, all of August, it's super hot and everything seems to bolt. So um, I'm looking at the Japanese mountain spinach. 40 to 60 days, and it's an amaranth relative. Lots of good things in the amaranth family. This is the funny thing about <laughs> the seed order. So the sunflower seeds here were free, zero, because it was the buy 25 things, and you get a bunch of fa their favorites for free. I just bought the chocolate cherry, look, the day before I wanted them, right? And the next day they had a deal and they sent me some more for free. So I know I'm going to love how beautiful these are. And I don't mind having twice as many seeds. So yay. And then they sent me the Amish paste tomatoes for free. Which I also had ordered. <laughs> the day before. But twice as many Amish paste. I can save some for next year. Or the year after. Or the year after. Or the year after. And then they also gave me. The normal free seed packet. So I got all those free seeds plus the normal free seeds, which is the spoon tomatoes. Um, I think this will be cute. Like just sprinkle some tomatoes in a salad or something like that. It would be adorable. And um, they shouldn't be too long. 65 to 70 days. 6 to 10 weeks starting early. And then 1 or 2 weeks to sprout. So we're looking at 2 months. Three, four and a half months you're looking forward to grow these. And yes, we do have another order because guess what? I thought that deal was too good. And I was like, oh, I need to keep looking. Is there anything else that I might miss? And then I can get those free seeds because it's such a good deal. So let's rip this open and see what else I got. Yes, they are teasing me about the expo again. Okay, I still want to go. I bought some more of the bull sweet corn. I had already ordered some for, of these a couple days earlier, but you need to really have a big block of corn and these sound so good. And so I've alluded several times before that I have a five acre property that's non-buildable. That's been in my family for like 50 years or something like that. Um, it's going to be mine. And so I can't build on it. Technically I can have like a picnic table, like a gazebo or something or a shed, um, maybe a tiny home if I can keep it within the dimensions. Um, if I do that, I'll definitely do videos on making a tiny home or what we do. Um, but I could do some gardening there and it, there's lake access. So I could water them and they flooded my property with lake water without permission so the water that's backed up onto my property, I can use to water my corn. Now, will the deer eat it? I'm sure. But if I grow a lot of it, maybe there'll be enough. Okay, so I bought more of the corn. And then I was doing research. Oh, you're already peeking. You're peeking and seeing what I didn't want you to see. I was doing a lot of research um, on starvation and how to prevent starvation. And I don't know what came up, but it's something about cow peas. And then I was like, okay, wait, Baker Creek. Baker Creek has cow peas. Okay. So this is originating in Africa. Cow peas are easy to grow and very popular in the South. An old standard variety, vigorous, high yielding vine. So I'm looking for things that grow easy by themselves without too much fuss and have are very high yielding. That means they're going to get a big crop. So I'm kind of over, kind of over the, um, okay, I'm not really over it. I'm lying. I'm, but I'm kind of over the whole thing of, oh, this is a, a, a very rare variety of bean and you plant it and you get one bean and you're like, oh, wow, no wonder it's rare because it doesn't produce very much. I want vigorous, high yielding plants. So I got the cow peas, California black eyed peas. Although I do have some students who told me that they're traumatized by having to eat them a lot. <laughs> um, Ozark Razorback cow peas. I was, in the, I was in the mood. I have never eaten a cow pea in my life. 
Beautiful peas are mottled, half white and half red, very productive bush plants. So these were not bush plants, were they? This one says old standard variety. Huh? Trellis. This one you need to trellis. Okay, but this one you don't. So I, I was kind of thinking about comparing them, seeing like which one is the most abundant, which one grows the most, which one tastes the best, which one keeps the best, which one sprouts and is has the highest germination rates. I also got the purple hole pink eye cow peas. A preferred variety of mini southerners, delicious flavor, holes are purple and old favorite. Soaking them overnight and then direct seeding them. They like warm soil. Trellis. This one's another trellis one. So I'm not going to plant them in the same spot. But under the same conditions because I want it to be a good, a good experiment. And I also got the Red Ripper cow peas. This, these are runners. Okay. Loaded. Heirloom. Okay, this is good. I like versatility. So it says great flavor, fresh or dried. So you can eat it fresh or you can let them go longer and dry them. I love that because a lot of times you turn your back and something has gone past its stage of, you know, perfection. And that way you can keep it going and you can dry the beans. And then the dried beans can be seeds for next year or you can have food. So your choice, right? It tolerates heat, drought, humidity. Okay. That's good to know. Trellis to conserve space. Beautiful. And I bought some more of the dandelion pinks because I did plant the ones I have a couple years ago. And they're not invasive like um, regular dandelions. And I don't know where they are because I can't. <laughs> the greens actually do look a little bit different than regular dandelions. Um, but some of them are pink and some of them are white. I think the ones that were white did better. Um, but I want to have the pink ones again because they're so cute. I love them. They are technically perennial and I'm sure that they'll pop up and I'll go, oh, there you are. Um, there's my precious pink, uh, dandelion. So I'm happy about those. That's just because I want them, not because I need them for food security, or whatever. Got some sugar bond peas and peas. Let's see here. Do do do. Sublimely. Crispy, crunchy, and sweet peas have both edible pods and peas. So I, I, I really don't want to grow peas that don't have edible pods. Um, I always get kind of frustrated because sometimes I'll mix, mix and match. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are these the ones that you can eat the pods or not? So I really want to thin down to where I'm only growing the ones that have edible pods and peas. And these never make it inside because we eat them outside as a snack. They're just so good. These are just for ornamental to help the pollinators. And because look how just pretty those are. Okay. So those are the salvia annual. So it can be perennial though in eight to 10. I'm in zone eight. So these could be perennial for me. Are they perennial for you? Are you in zone eight to 10? Eight to 10? Yes, yes, yes. This is going to be good for butterflies and hummingbirds. We have lots of hummingbirds. Okay, so that was a good deal. Then here is the receipt, thirty-three forty-four, which is twice as much as I'm supposed to spend in a week, but I had to spend twenty-five to get the free seeds, right? And here are the free seeds. I got again, very happily. So, I got cabbage. Cabbage is great for food security. So like all those soups, every stock, soup stock you have has cabbage in it. The chocolate sunflowers, which are going to be the multi-stem sunflowers I can do for cutting. I'm sure the seeds in there will be good for wildlife, not really for people because they're going to be tiny. Um, Amish paste tomatoes, which eventually someday in the future, I will start making my own sauces. I make my own sauces, but like fresh, whatever, not um, or I usually use it for salsas. My husband does too. We just cut them up, put them in a salad, put them on a hamburger, put them in a tacos or whatever. Um, we don't usually have so much. We had a couple years where we, it was insane. 
every year it seems though there's like one crop that just goes boom. Um, sometimes it's tomatoes, sometimes it's not tomatoes. So I, if I have another big boom on tomatoes, I will try to learn canning. I did buy the stuff to do it and it shouldn't be too hard since it's a high acidic type of, of, um, of, uh, material. So I'm, I'm thinking it's, I feel kind of safer making jams and jellies and, um, like marinara. So, and then I got the Japanese wasabi again and I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And right when I said I had four packages, I went to the mailbox and there was a fifth package. So this was my last order from the month of February. Yes, I, I honestly did twice as much in February, the whole month of February as I'm supposed to. Still, I mean, you think of it this way, 35. Okay. I spent, let me see. Let me do the math. Okay. It was like a hundred dollars for all the seeds I've done so far. Not, not counting this, but girls, you know how much it costs to get your nails done. All of this was my spending for the month. Like this was my, these are my jewels. These are my bedazzled nails with a flower, you know? Um, so I'm going to justify it any way I want to justify it and you can't control me. <laughs> Let's open this one up and see what I got. Let's see if it was worth getting another package in the month of February. Okay. So there were some people, okay. I got jealous. Okay. Here's the, here's the honest, the honest reason. The honest reason I did one more seed packet order for the month of February from Baker Creek. I did other seed orders just from other vendors, by the way. Um, yes, I did one more order because I got jealous. Okay. So yes, I'm jealous of all the people who get to go to that, uh, expo that I don't get to go to, but I got jealous because people were talking about their crazy cherry tomatoes. And I was like, man, I need some crazy. I need crazy cherry tomatoes. And I'm like, yeah. And my, one of my friends, the gardening artist posted about these orange berries. And I was like, what? How did I miss these? Okay. This is why I put the order in this one right here. I was like, how did I miss these? Um, so Italian heirloom collected by the, huh? in Umbria, Italy, an ancient Roman, an ancient Roman site of, huh? Stunningly, stunningly beautiful orange form of common black nightshade. So be careful, ornamental. And we believe, ed we believe edible. Uh Oh, okay. Baker Creek. I'm scared now. No one told me it was a, a belief. Is it edible? <laughs> Now you got me nervous. I bought these because my friend posted about them and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to grow them too. That sounds interesting. Maybe poisonous to eat. I'm having regurts. I'm having regurts, Baker Creek, because you see something like this. I don't recall reading that it was possibly edible to eat. I think I read that you have to make sure it's ripe. So, you know, with having kids, I'm probably not going to grow these. Ah, uh, I'm not happy. Not happy a bit. I could swear it said edible when ripe. Here it says we believe it's edible. That was a waste of money. Sad. Okay. I can't take the risk because my kid, I, I have children. I don't want them going out there and loading up on this and having a handful of them. And then getting sick or whatever. So, no. Huckleberries. Now, these need to be ripe. Okay. Unripened fruit can be poisonous. So, they have to be ripe. Which is similar to, like, ground cherries. Ground cherries have to be ripe. They have to be, like, fully yellow or they drop off the plant. Um, I haven't grown these before. I do have other seeds like this. Um, but these have heavier yields than wonderberry. So, it sounds good easy to cultivate and they have to be ripe. I don't m so much mind it if it's just something like it has to be ripe, but the possibility of these not being edible, that no. Mm. So you got to tell me, have you grown these? 
Did you grow these in dye? Comment below. Did you grow these Otricoli orange berries? And if you survived, comment below. I've got the dwarf tamarillo or tamarillo. 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 Do you hear the owls or not? Dwarf tamarillo. So it's going to be smaller than normal. South American native miniature version of the regular tamarillo. I have tamarillo seeds somewhere. I need to pull those out and actually plant them. This does say it ripens smaller golden fruit in clusters. May need a greenhouse cultivation in the north, which I can do that for them. Frost-free conditions. It eventually grows into a small tree. That's kind of cool. Age of 12 weeks early. And it takes two to three weeks to germinate. So I'm going to want to plant these in a pot because if they grow into a little tree, I don't want them to die, which I've been growing my peppers in, in pots too. And my students are looking at the pots and they're like, what is that? Is that a pepper? I'm like, yep. They're like, it's inside. I'm like, yeah, because peppers are perennials if you grow them inside. And I got some more free lettuce. Okay. I, this is crazy. Now that week I did, I did spend a normal amount. Okay. I basically only went crazy because they had that deal, spend $25 and you get a bunch of free seed packets for free. So, um, I got my money's worth. That is for sure. For sure. For sure. I just spent barely over a hundred dollars and this would be enough for an entire garden. I got squash in there. I got lettuce. I have corn, tomatoes, fruits. Yeah. Grains, greens, grains. Like, honestly, if you were going to put this as a meal, this would be a very well-rounded meal. So, you know, what I like to say at the end of my videos, besides you should make a comment, what do you think you would buy here? Are you as scared of these? Like, would you grow them still? Why should I just grow it and tell my kids don't eat that? I don't know. Would you, would you grow these? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So this is a very well-balanced meal. And so, you know, be good, be sweet, and grow a garden if you want to eat. I'll see you next time, everybody. Make sure you click like, subscribe, and all that jazz. In my next video, I'm, I'll am i have at least three packages on my next video. One from Baker Creek, one from, I think, Burpee, and one from someplace in North Carolina. So definitely want to... Hit the bell so you see that, that video. And if you didn't see the last one, go ahead and watch that now. See you next time. What did you think about those Baker Creek heirloom seeds? Those packages we just opened up. And um, what do you think? What variety are you going to grow? Are there any similar varieties? Does it make you think of anything? Is there anything I've left out? Is there a variety I have neglected to purchase? Post in the comments below. If you think of a, a type of seed that I have not mentioned on my channel yet, um, and you know, I probably have it, <laughs> you could try, put a comment below of a Baker Creek variety of seeds that you think I should get. Chances are I already have it, but let's go for it. And, um, if you're growing any of the varieties that I mentioned today, um, let me know that too. Let's grow. Let's grow. I would love to see some pictures of your gardens and we can compare and contrast and, and see like, you know, what works, what works, you know, what works better. Um, what doesn't work so well and what works in one place might not work in another place or, you know, in a different uh, zone and so forth. So let's do the little experimenting, um, and share. I like this. To be, I really like my channel to be a community. So I really look forward to seeing more comments Hit like, subscribe, notifications, and on the next video, I have a box from Burpee to open, and I just got, I just opened the mailbox, and I have a package from Baker, from not Baker Creek, from M.I. Gardener. So we have a Burpee order and an M.I. Gardener to order to open on the next video. I'll see you then. Click like, subscribe, and all that jazz, and remember, be good, be sweet, and if you want to in garden if you want to eat. <laughs> How do we say that? Okay, hold on. Be good, be sweet. Grow a garden if you want to eat. See you next time.